Hi, I'm Everett. Welcome back to the shop. I thought I would flip the camera around and do the intro from the other direction this time, uh, just to show the sorts of things I've been doing in the shop. Um, didn't really build anything for this video, but uh, I just made a few changes around here that uh, hopefully will work a little better in the long run. I'm actually kind of embarrassed uh, to say that uh, when I was editing the last couple videos that I was editing, at exactly how dark some of the scenes were, and when you bring up the brightness in a particular scene, there's only so much you can do before you get noise. And what I wound up doing was actually adding more light, and I'm going to give a bit of a tour of that. One of the biggest reasons of pointing this way this time is that if you look right, is that if you look right above my head there, those are my two first stickers that uh, were given to me by other YouTubers. The one on the top there is Pierre Baudry's from uh, Pierre's Garage and the one underneath is uh, from Phil's projects, uh, Philip Desjardins. Uh, the two of them, really cool guys, work, they're, they're over in Quebec, they do, they do some fun stuff. Anyway, I, have, I now have a sticker wall. What I wound up doing was, um, I had to find a place to put stickers, and I've got pretty much all the walls in this place either covered with a toolbox, a machine tool, shelves, drawers, whatever. The last thing I had was the wall that moved. I wound up taking some of that uh, twin wall uh, plastic, the, the corrugated plastic, and uh, cut a panel that would fit. Cut a panel that would fit into that uh, that little frame there, uh, right in, right next to the insulation, and it slides in beautifully. It's about a quarter inch thick, and so now I have a spot where I can collect stickers. So if anybody else has stickers, cool. I, I love collecting stickers like that. So by all means, send me one. I'll uh, email me and I'll get you my address. One of the cool things that happened this week was I was on Kijiji, which is a, an online classified ad system here in Canada. And uh, I've been snooping, watching for a reasonably priced uh, small toolbox for a while because all of my micrometers and like basic, you know, decent measuring tools were stuffed into a little uh, two drawer mid box from a you know from a normal size toolbox and the overflow was out on the bench and getting stuff dropped on it and whatever and so one of the cool things was I there was a uh, top box and roller cabinet came on to Kijiji for 75 bucks and top box has roller slides bottom drawer or bottom box is an older craftsman unit very similar to one I had when I was an apprentice and so I'll show that in a bit, but I thought that was pretty darn cool. So now with that, I was able to clean off my workbench, get that one toolbox off my workbench, and rearrange the shop and do some cleaning. So there's the top box. You know, it's kind of nice. It's got roller slides, four drawers. I couldn't figure out where to put the micrometer box, so I'm just going to live up here and I'll leave the lid open. But it's nice because everything's here. Not, I'm not dropping anything. Got room for, you know, all the different things like my, you know, basic measuring stuff, you know, T gauges, hard, you know, hardness files, that sort of thing. It's nice because that's I got space for all my uh, depth mics and such. And for my drill bits, you know, odds and sods, uh, miscellaneous measuring tools, whatever. Um, you know, all my taps and dies are now in a couple of drawers. It's awesome. One of the nice things is this toolbox, uh, top box roller cabinet setup is small enough and on wheels that I can move it around because one way or another, I still need to be able to park a car on that other side of the shop. So this side here that's currently being uh, occupied by strollers and my dumpster lawnmower and, uh, well, little man's extra saucer. I know he's getting a little bit old for it, but he still finds it fun. And it keeps him contained when he's out here. Uh, that there is where the better half has to be able to park a car, because there's no way that I want her to have to scrape a vehicle at quarter to six in the morning to head to work. That's just, yeah, that's just not right. So one of the nice things about everything being able to be moved and pushed over this way is, even right now, I have room to get in there with kind of like a galley kitchen style um, workspace, and we can still get a car over here once I fold up the strollers. But yeah, got the, you know, the press in the corner I can still get at, the mill, lathe, drill press. That bench there I can now use because it's not covered in crap. A couple uh, active projects. And in that corner, where that uh, mid box used to be, is, uh, well, those are just storage bins of junk bolts and things for now. But uh, if I ever get better storage over there or shelving, that'd be, that'd be down the road. One other fun thing was this summer I was at a garage sale and I got three airlines uh, for five bucks. 
you've, they've been hanging on the edge of the uh, one workbench there for, for a while and I just haven't been using them. And finally got around to getting some ends for them. So now I have enough air hose to reach all the way to the curb from here. Which is kind of nice because before all I could do is pretty much the garage door with the short hose that I had before. So I know you get a bit of line loss that long, but it beats dragging the air compressor out from underneath the bench. One thing that I was embarrassed about on the uh, video I've been taking lately of the mill is I didn't realize that it was that dark. What I wound up doing was uh, getting some 100 watt equivalent LED bulbs and put one in the uh, articulating lamp, this one, um, I put a 100 watt LED or 100 watt equivalent LED in it to point this way. That helped a lot. One nice thing too is I also found a uh, light today at the thrift store. This is one of those lamps that uh, has, has a clip that uh, you stick to a headboard or whatever. Put a 100 watt in it or 100 watt equivalent in it and just made a little bracket that went off the back of the mill on one of the mount bolts. And so now we got lots of light. In addition to that new um, lamp that I got from the thrift store, I also put in a new fixture hanging from the ceiling there and there to help shed light on this end of the shop, which should help with the lighting as well. Speaking of getting around to doing stuff, this mower, I seriously pulled it out of a dumpster. It's in nice shape otherwise. I mean, there's one small tear in the bag on the back, but uh, yeah, pulled it out of the dumpster and cranked it over, wouldn't fire. Compression test showed 90 PSI, uh, good spark, so I found that the fuel was a little bit old. Replaced the fuel, cleaned the float bowl and the jet, fired up, runs beautifully. So now I have a uh, lawnmower. And uh, the price was right, that's for sure. At some point uh, I'll have to change the oil in it, it's pretty gross, but other than that, <laughs> can't go bad for a free mower. So that's mostly what's been happening around here lately. One fun thing about this whole YouTube gig is you wind up meeting some really cool people. And uh, they're <laughs> just due to the fact that uh, somebody you know noticed a couple things and uh, f uh, realized that he wasn't that far from here, uh, wound, up, uh, wound up striking up a friendship with another hobby machinist in the neighborhood. Yeah, so we've been tr trading stuff back and forth and you know different things. Uh, and uh, he wound up getting a new copy of the Engineer's Black Book. Uh, I know Adam Booth has been plugging these and mentioning how good they are, and I'd never really looked in one, but uh, because Eldon got the new one, or new version, he gave me his old version, so I wound up getting the, he gave me his first, uh, first edition. And I will admit, this is actually a really cool book. I have a copy of the Machinery's Handbook, uh, 29th edition, I believe, but I, <laughs> Adam Booth and Eldon are right, this thing here has most of what you need for the basic stuff you do in the shop, like, uh, you know, bolt hole circles and the calculations for keyways and stuff like that. Like, this, is, this is really slick, so I just want to publicly say thank you, Eldon, you rock. Again, not a whole lot of machining this time, but uh, just sort of show you how I've been able to reorganize and get things a little bit more efficient. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, I'll see you next time.